Ozempic, the weight loss sensation that has been sweeping the nation. Use of Ozempic and other GLP-1 agonists have increased exponentially in our society in this last year. Slapped with a rebrand to Wegovy and dose increase, Ozempic is being advertised as weight loss in a simple shot or pill. And it's working. GLP-1s have been snapped up by more and more patients who would have never been on it before, when it previously had only been indicated for diabetes. Easy, fast, guaranteed to work? Sure, your mileage may vary on how much weight loss you might personally lose, but can Ozempic also cause you to feel off or not like yourself? In the worst cases, can it lead to depression or even thoughts of self-harm? Well, that's what we're here to talk about today. Welcome to Wealth is Health. Life has changed a lot in these last five years, but it definitely has not gotten any easier for many of us. Simply waking up every day can be a struggle for so many reasons. We stumbled out of the pandemic in a daze, expecting, hoping that life would be better now, or at least back to some perceived pre-pandemic normal. But we've been disappointed. Why? Many reasons, but increased cost of living is among the most ubiquitous for everyone. Everything is more expensive. People's paychecks have not kept up with inflation. Student loan interest is back. Mortgage rates are at all-time high, but housing costs have not fallen. It's more expensive than ever to get a degree, to the point where it doesn't even seem worth it to go to college anymore. Not to mention how hard it is to find someone to spend the rest of your life with, or having kids, or even just a pet. Our American dreams are stagnating. We can't have everything we want, but at least there's still always been food. Though cost for food has also been increasing, we keep on eating. Because it's not just something we want, it's something we physically need, which makes it easy to justify buying. Every day, if left unchecked, we still look to maximize pleasure eating. But of course, with the calories come the pounds, and we wake up, look in the mirror, and we're conditionally unhappy with how we look. Our pants don't fit anymore, and physically we're worse off too. We can handle a flight of beers, but not a flight of stairs. Our unhealthy relationship is not new. Insidious waistline growth has been a problem that's been growing for years. But while everything else has been getting worse, our ability to affect our weight has changed, possibly for the better. With the new marketing of GLP-1 agonists came a lot of promise of weight loss, a hormonal readjustment to make you fuller faster, stay fuller for longer, real weight loss where the pounds go away and stay away. As long as you keep taking it, at least. So, people that do should be happier, right? For some people, yes, but not everyone is happier. And for other patients, they actually feel worse rather than better. A number of these report feeling much, much worse. As people have taken GLP-1 agonists in the last year, more and more individual reports are coming out linking these meds with thoughts of self-harm, even suicides. This has led to some countries to even pause distribution of the meds while more studies are conducted. Delving into the research, articles and reports, I ultimately found that you can divide the experiences that people have reported with GLP-1 agonists as mostly good, neither bad nor good, or mostly bad, and the initial experience can change with time. When it comes to really severe psychiatric side effects of clinical depression or suicidal ideation, the numbers thankfully are small. The reporting of these side effects are in the hundreds. Of course, there is always a problem in medicine of underreporting. There are no doubt also people who have felt poorly on the medication and stopped it early before anything severe happened. These aren't big numbers while you have the potential of millions of people taking the medication, but even small numbers are meaningful if the side effects are severe enough, especially when we can't say who is more at risk than others. What may be surprising is how many people report not feeling any better while being on the medication or even just feeling a little bit worse even if it isn't clinically severe enough to call depression. There is a range depending on where you look, but roughly 30% of patients report feeling less satisfied while being on the medication even though they have lost weight. But why? Losing weight should make people feel happier, more satisfied with their bodily image, right? Yes, but there are several factors we don't consider. At what cost and how much will be enough? Let me explain. These are questions we fail to ask as humans before making decisions generally. Most of us have looked in the mirror and thought, I would be better if I lost five pounds. But after losing those five pounds, we think about how much better it would be if we lost another five pounds. We are pre-programmed to always want a little bit more, but some people can't get enough weight loss on a GLP-1, so there's frustration, and that's even before talking about other costs like side effects which are another large reason many people describe negative experiences on Ozempic. Nausea is the most common, but
but also people commonly experience vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, constipation, headache, fatigue, and some people get really severe reactions that require ED visits or even hospitalization. Like many things in medicine, it's not understood well why one person feels so much worse than someone else. It should be noted that for many side effects, it can be transient, only noticeable with new dose increases. But there's more to it than that. The other big factor that contributes to negative experience is hard to see up front, but simple in hindsight. It begins with a very basic question to ask yourself. Why do we eat what we eat? Sustenance is the most important reason, but especially in a first world country like America, there's more than that. We are absolutely surrounded by high calorie food choices. Ads flash at us from every direction, whether we're online, offline, or inline. With all the options in the world every day, what do we pick to eat? Well, generally we eat what tastes best in the moment, and that's usually not broccoli or carrots. In a world that's a daily struggle, but food is plentiful, we all eat to feel good. We eat to enjoy it. It's a daily human behavior to seek pleasure in the moment. And nothing is more daily a pleasure than food. Weight loss medications take that pleasure away. You eat less, but even when you do eat, it might not taste as good as it used to. Eating too much especially is likely to bring on those side effects that we mentioned earlier. Something that was once a daily pleasure now becomes neutral at best or painful at worst. This is not just conjecture either. Professor Jen Stuhl's host, I'm probably not saying that right, is a scientist who helped create GLP-1 agonists like Ozempic. He studied them for many years before this latest craze, and he's seen it play out over time and time again, and has this to say about GLP-1s, quote, Once you've been on this for a year or two, life is so miserably boring that you can't stand it any longer. Look, one of our daily pleasures is food, and that pleasure can be something beautiful. Losing it has long-term consequences that we as humans cannot see at the onset. We are seeing it more now with people taking these medications already. Their discontent compounds over time. It doesn't help that the weight loss can be rapid in noticeable areas, leading to ozempic butt or ozempic face, that comes with the sagging skin left behind. Though people get used to the weight going away, they fear rebound and eventually regaining it, so even if they feel mentally worse, they then try to still stay on it. Why do we as humans do things like this to ourselves? Well, because in the moment, it is easier. It's easier to take a daily pill or weekly injection. Easier than to actually delve into our psyche to change the very nature of our being. Easier than trying to change our relationship with food from an unhealthy one to a healthy one. Easier in the short term, a guiding principle of basic human behavior. But in the long run, there is no contest for which will be better for all of us. Adopting a healthy diet and exercise, of course, is better than a pill or injection. It is better mentally, physically, and financially. We're not even going to go into the financial cost of these drugs today, but of course that comes into play as well. Okay then, so side effects, as well as making eating an unhappy experience, is that what can lead to the severe depression, thoughts of self-harm, or suicide that we've talked about? It is part of it, but looking into the research and case reports, the data points to something even deeper in the most severe cases. For those on injections, people have noticed the worst symptoms are the day directly after their weekly injections. This is the day where they wonder if everything would be better for everyone if they just didn't wake up at all tomorrow. Some report even darker thoughts, and many report these thoughts do not seem like they're coming from a place in themselves. Only an even smaller portion act on these thoughts. My heart goes out to these people and anyone who's experienced that deep emptiness, the hollow pain that comes out when we're at our lowest, where we feel that nothing is good and it does not feel like it could ever get better. It is difficult to say who's likely to feel this way in a GLP-1 agonist. That is something that may or may not come out with more and more research and time. These medications bypass the blood-brain barrier, and I have no doubt the effects come from deep, complex interactions with our brain that we only understand in basic oversimplifications. I've seen some suggestions that if you or a family have a history of depression or suicide, you should just stay away for now. Others suggest increased vigilance. Being on alert for these feelings, especially when you're just starting a medication or increasing the dose. The numbers of severe symptoms are small enough that I think increased vigilance can be enough, but even that recommendation does make me feel a little uncomfortable. Also notable in my research, people who reported psychiatric side effects on Wagovi or Ozempic might not have had the same effects on Manjaro or vice versa. Why? Again, unclear. But if you or someone you know is feeling mild or more severe depressive symptoms, 
It definitely could be worth changing to different medication if decreasing the dose isn't enough. Ultimately, the short-term benefits of Ozempic and other GLP-1 agonists are clear. Weight loss that can be sustained. For how long is less clear? In general, most people will find the benefits can outweigh the negatives. But that could indeed change over the course of years. As far as the research suggests, there's more of a general discontent than true side effects of clinical depression or suicidal ideation. Those risks do seem to be much smaller. But the scope of who will suffer these side effects exactly and how long it will take, that's not something we have a clear understanding yet. Given a few more years and more research, I could definitely see a time where there are enough reports coming out that lead to GLP-1s requiring something like a black box warning for rare but severe mood altering side effects. Only time will really tell. I hope this was helpful for everyone. Of course, consider dropping a like or subscribing for more content as we continue to explore the good, the bad, and the ugly of health and healthcare. Thank you.